welcome back to our exciting adventure in looking for humanity and humility in our urban jungle here in uh, Honolulu and particularly in Waikiki. And we're going to have um, the most utmost Tarzans with us. And they're actually originally from Long Beach, California, the crew around uh, legendary Edward Killingsworth. And we're going to have back his late partner and friend, uh, Ron Lindgren. Hi, Ron. Hi, how are you, Martin? I'm good. Let's jump right back into where we um, had to leave last time. So let's go to slide one here and call us, uh, tell us again about Carlos Denise and his um, uh, strategic move here. Carlos Denise, uh, in my mind and in many people's minds, was the finest architectural illustrator in the United States for decades. We were so lucky to have him work for us. This drawing, uh, obviously taken uh, from uh, seemingly from out in the ocean looking back towards Dolly Kalani. That was the dream of what we thought it would look like. Uh, and notice how cleverly, in order to make the uh, eyes look at the Dolly Kalani, that uh, Carlos has put a catamaran mast very tall to pretty much mask out the, the, uh, the mass of the Sheraton Hotel next door. Exactly. And at this point, you know, this is sort of um, wrapping up the, the imagination and the inspiration. And please recap your, what you call them, the six principles of your design, if you don't mind. Yeah, very, very quickly. Uh, there were six design strategies that were followed uh, to some success. First of all, we walled off those noisy adjacent neighbors with buildings all around the perimeter of the site. Secondly, those same buildings would create quiet and secluded garden courtyards that all faced south. The buildings all stepped down to a one- and two-story residential scale at the ocean front. Then we capped all of the buildings, all of the structures, in fact, with the iconic Dickey roofs. All of the cars were contained in a multi-level parking garage that was on that non-ocean front part of the Holly County property, which is north of Kalia Road. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, all the designers involved endeavored to create uh, what would be an elegant, luxurious, unexpectedly residential ambience at grade and at the second floor public places in the midst of lively urban YTT. And talking lively urban, let's switch modes of transportation and get off the catamaran to a helicopter and next slide. And here we finally see how it all comes together. And tell us what's different to the imagination in the realization of it. Yeah, here uh, in, in the last drawing, of course, we saw what our dream of the hotel was like. Here is where we were gratified by uh, climbing way up into the shares and then looking down and seeing what we had wrought on the Holly Kalani site. And uh, uh, I think all of those strategies I've talked about, a lot of them are, are illustrative just by looking at the photographs. The one uh, thing that I might have wished uh, hadn't happened is that client was so secure in their thinking that the hotel would be a success, that late in the game of the working drawings, they asked us to add another 100 rooms. Mm -hmm. And because uh, all of the buildings and plans were in shape, that was a matter of my trying to decide how to add 100 rooms, which meant adding more height. Mm -hmm. And though, even though the hotel still appears as uh, a mid-rise project, it could have been, from the photograph you're seeing, all of those could have been uh, three and maybe even four stories less tall. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, if we look, the Southern I did a show that's about uh, sort of the lanaying of the nature of hospitality architecture. You see a lot of lanai's here and they seem to follow uh, uh, sort of a uniform pattern, but let's go to the next slide indeed. And this is our mandatory um, environmental check here, basically looking, and this is almost like blasphemic if you wanna basically environmentally assess something from the mid eighties, which is the time with Ronnie Reagan that, you know, who couldn't have cared less about anything that had to do with the environment, you were pretty much a rebel against that. And while we saved the audience from all the bad things we were left with from the postmodern 80s 
and basically show only a, a good one that we've been pointed out polemically, that is the Atlantis by um, Architectonica. And while it is, as you call it, a good joke, you know, it, is, it has nothing to do with environmentally interested or conscious. As the Google uh, map uh, assessment shot here shows very much in sort of um, tracing back to the uh, Kahala, both hotel and the apartments, you design it in a way that it's pretty much self-shading itself at, at most times of the year, so that at the bottom uh, right, that brutal sort of sunset western sun won't burn you. And um, yeah, so let's go to the next slide here. And I also want to point out here that while the, uh, the lanais look pretty much uniform from a distance. And uh, once you get closer, you see there is a tremendous amount of diversity within that unity. And these are just examples to many more situations. So I urge you guys to uh, check that out. And if you look around in Waikiki, hardly ever are the balconies or lanais or whatever you want to call them inhabited. But here they very much are, which again speaks for what you continue to call a more domestic character than a hotel one, right? And I must add that because this is a luxury hotel with some pretty expensive rates for rooms, these outdoor rooms really get well used, uh, especially because uh, people always want to uh, have the ultimate comfort, and that is room service on the lanai. Mm -hmm. And so all day long, especially at breakfast, you'll see uh, happy guests uh, in their robes, looking out at the ocean and drinking uh, their orange juice. Yeah, yeah. And talking happy guests, next slide here. I want to you know, add one more layer or point out another layer that you added, which is in addition to the glass sliding doors, there's actually wood screens behind it on the inside that you could open and close. And then within that, you can turn louvers. So you are having a multitude of how you want to basically adjust the amount of air you want to have to come in and the amount of light, which I found rather uh, spectacular. Uh, move on to the and next. Also, mm -hmm. I was going to say that also, it's such a tropical touch. Uh, I think it's such an improvement over what ends up being sort of damp uh, uh, drapes hanging yeah. from a ceiling. I love it. Yeah, damn drapes. I will quote you on that. It's got your copyright perfectly said. Let's move to the next slide here. Um, talking drapes, you know, and, uh, and curtains and fenestration and skins. Um, first of all, we want to thank your former colleague and friend who has invited you to do a tour about your former Waikiki Park, now rebranded as the Halipulani, uh, Halipuna, yeah, right? Yes. Yeah, Ken, Ken Mizuno was the uh, project manager for uh, the Hale Kalani during the construction, uh, design and construction of the Hale Kalani and of Waikiki Park, which was the first uh, modern boutique hotel in uh, Waikiki. And now it's been reopened just uh, last October as the new Hale, Hale Puna mm -hmm. Waikiki Hotel. Yeah. And while I witnessed you being rather charmed and satisfied by the sensitivity, uh, they didn't bling it. Um, they didn't, uh, you know, uh, do anything to end that would be disrespectful or obnoxious. But I insist, uh, being the critical, uh, you know, nitpicking guy here, Debbie Downer, that I wish they would have kept what you see at the bottom left which not only the lanai had a sliding door, but also the, the piece of glass that was flush with the facade and the guardrail continues, you see there was also a sliding door and that was taken out and replaced by fixed glazing. So you don't have any more what I call side ventilation where you get the breeze sort of diagonally crossed through the room. And I find this unfortunate, but one could say, you know, who am I and we're all biased and sentimental, you know, and all of that and more. But at the top right, there's our um, expert who actually has a degree in what we're talking about. And this is uh, exotic escapism expert Suzanne, who is currently revisiting her other fellow tropics in Brazil, which sensitizes her even more because it's, it's, it's way more humid there. It's way more tropical. 
So there would be more reason for hermeticizing, but here in Hawaii, again, as this photo by DeSoto, provided by DeSoto here, about the people wearing little to nothing, again, you had been getting closer to that. So I would urge in future renovations to basically um, go uh, keep that. And next slide here, which is, um, again, um, share a little bit your assessment of the sort of re uh, purposing of your uh, Waikiki Park. Yes, the uh, uh, as I said, uh, the hotel did open on October 25th. Uh, here I'm walking with Ken Rizzino at the right through a space yet that of course hasn't been furnished. This is three weeks before opening and all the furniture arrives in a hectic time yeah. uh, before the hotel opens itself. Uh, it, it's, it, there's, there's elegance about it but you can see, for example, on the upper left, that uh, louvers were used more as uh, as ornamental features rather than something that would be actu actually useful in the environment. In other words, opening and closing them for uh, getting natural ventilation. Uh, it, it's, it's an elegant place. I hope to get back and see it soon where, where it's furnished. Uh, I think it's, its biggest success is that at the ground floor, it's opened up to each Kalia Road, and it's brought some urban life to what had been a very dead street yeah. on uh, uh, across from Holly Klein. Yeah, yeah. And let's jump to the next slide. Maybe I quote what you said to Ken. You said, Ken, I really appreciate it. It feels very upscale and sophisticated New Yorkan, but aren't we in Hawaii? And that, I think, yes. says it all in your honest, respectful, but constructively critical way. And this is here us in our more moderately prized two-star hotel, the Waikiki Grand, around the corner in the hood on my way out to my morning running routine that used to take me through the Halekonali. And here I see the neighbor's newspaper that I allowed myself to unroll. And what do we see? The title page is, today's title page, by the way, is our friend DeSoto Brown who has been diligently working on the surf exhibit, but that he wore himself out and his immune system is down, but he got the mission accomplished. So congratulations to Soto, but now he needs to take some rest and is not with us. Here, uh, your hotel was the star in the star advertiser, and they were talking about some massive, basically expanding of the whole uh, hotel chain, right? This, this really brings back memories to me. 35 years ago, the Holly Colony also had massive plans for expansion. I myself had provided three preliminary designs for more hotels in Hawaii, one on Maui, one on Kauai, one on the Big Island. And I had also designed uh, a Holly Colony Los Angeles, which would have been a 33-story tower. We actually finished all of the working drawings and all of the approvals. But all of that uh, fell to the wayside because of the 1990s financial recession in Japan that yeah. lasted the entire decade. Now, it's wonderful to hear that the uh, Hale Kalani have resumed those ideas. They've already opened the Hale Kalani Okinawa this summer. Mm -hmm. They've just opened uh, the completely renovated Hale Puna Waikiki. They're now looking at the rest of Southeast Asia, the other Hawaiian islands, Europe, continental in the United States, mm -hmm. and they're interested, as they say in this article, not in scale, but in quality. Mm -hmm. And I'm so proud of the fact that when they're talking about quality, they're still looking back at the original Holly Klani Hotel as the touchstone for what they think is quality architecture. Absolutely. And along that, we wouldn't be we if we wouldn't have some uh, constructively critical polemic propositions. So let's move to the next slide here. Um, so we have been using automobiles as vehicles for thought. And while here the originally DeSotos and then Chryslers always seem to have had the need to basically evolve and change their style. The one at the bottom is basically exactly from the era that you built the hotel. And while me, the Americano, can see some value in that, and this is about the Lee Ayakaka years where he tried to bring Chrysler back to what it was, with some success, and but and usually the general public wouldn't say, well, this is a collectible, this is. But next slide, um, your hotel is, and again, mid 80s, we took the right to uh, chip in an additional picture of our choice. And this is my additional picture here. 
And again, I want to I want to remind the audience this is the midst of postmodernism. Stanley, Stanley Tigerman is being one of the big proponents had just passed away, so God bless him. And his most iconic project is the parking garage in uh, Chicago with uh, the the facade looking like the grill of a Rolls Royce. So just like the Atlantis, very sort of ironically, polemically here, you are basically having to fenestrate or the absence of it, the ballroom, and you just made it as blunt as you can be, this blank wall, no bullshit, uh, no decoration, and then you added to it the, the vestibule. And I was able to take that pick when we had that bride down there, so I'm very, very proud of that. So I think while the postmodernists were ironic, you weren't, you were serious, but you were very humorous um, as you are in your architecture and as a person, Ron. So thanks for that. And functionally, uh, the ballroom has to be a, a hermetic space and yeah. people have to be able to hear. And so it's, it's cut off. But uh, our purpose here was that the pre-function space, the space where you might go out to smoke or you might have drinks before going into the ballroom, would be open to the elements. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's protected by DBs, but it's open air experience before one then goes into the hermetic experience. Yeah, absolutely. And next one here, next slide. Um, again, what do the cars do here uh, at the bottom right? This was not the, the, the LeBarons weren't called LeBaron anymore, they were called Sebrings. That was in 2002. And so is the picture at the bottom left that was taken in 2002. Now we don't have Sebrings anymore. The most Chrysler, the hottest one we can get is the 300M, I guess it's called at the top right. And uh, that is now, and so is the picture at the top left. So we're talking one and a half decades where everything seems to feel like I have to change and I have to modernize, I have to upgrade myself, but not so much the hotel. And you say that's true for even going back even more, right, in time. Yeah, one, one of Ed Kelly's words, Maxim, was that if there was an opportunity to do so, that the architecture should have a timeless character, one that could last. And uh, if one had been at the opening of the hotel, as I was 35 years ago, and then look at the same view today, it would look the same. Absolutely. So timelessness has held up. There hasn't been an urge on the part of, of this very fine client and management company to change what has worked for them over the years. Absolutely, and that gets us to the next slide here. Um, as it has been analyzed and scholarly um, researched by our main historian, Don Hibbert, who dedicated many pages to it, once again, in his uh, fantastic book, uh, Designing Paradise. So next slide, um, it's, but when we say what, you know, Suzanne confirms to say, there is a sort of novelty need or this sort of need to renew itself. So I'm throwing something out as a fellow colleague here. So um, if we want to change something, how wrong about um, we take the outer facades here facing to Eva and to Mauka, to Kalia Street and the outrigger, and we start to rewild that and opening it up more and we stay within the vocabulary of the Killingsworth legacy at the top right, just next door the Malka uh, screens of the Nauhale Puna or some years down the road with your colleague and friend Larry Stricker of the Ihilani where sort of, you know, vegetation and, uh, and curtains were used as friend. So could you think of that or am I totally nuts for that? No, not at all. Uh, back in the 80s when uh, the hotel was designed, uh, the real interest in, in uh, incorporating the environment and, and, and how, why that's so important wasn't really uh, you know, a major factor. If I had to do this over again, I think those single-loaded corridors, which did provide views out to the outside world, of course, and light, uh, should have been more open so that not only the view, but uh, the breeze, uh, even the, the tropical smells, <laughs> like tea, some of which are nice, uh, yeah, I would have opened that up more somewhat. I'm not sure how right now looking at that picture, but I agree with you completely. Mm -hmm. Next slide. So I said with that, let's do it. And this is a message to the ownership and to the management. I once had the chance to run into uh, Peter Shandlin up at the Lillestrand house. And so, hi, Peter. 
we will send the show to you as food for thought. So, you know, if you think you should change something, maybe that's something. And the architect of record and of handwriting, you know, is here, is around. So please reach out to him because who knows better about the soul and the original integrity of the building than, than you, Ron. So we are sort of, we have to leave even, you know, you know, we would like to stay forever, but uh, we have to move on. Uh, our dream vacation is over, so we're on the way to head out, but not without uh, you having gotten your choice of an additional picture. And tell us why you choose this one. Just as people who walk into the hotel as pedestrians had a view into a courtyard, we wanted uh, those who came in up by car to also uh, very unexpectedly step out of their car walk up a few steps and suddenly look into this quiet, secluded courtyard across the broad lawn, across the swimming pool terrace and out to the ocean. And here is a manicured jungle, mm -hmm. uh, still with a very residential scale. And as you leave the hotel for the last time, you take a glance out that way and remember, hopefully, what a great time you've had there. And let's share that further with the audience. Go to the next slide. Because that's, unfortunately, the lighting was a little, when I took the picture, so actually what's wide in the back is what we just saw. And you're looking this direction. You're kind of reflecting back on your beautiful time you had in the sort of manicured jungle, as you called it. But everything else in the hotel here, all the finishes, is pretty much the original. And we would basically urge, you know, while everything else, including next door, is thinking you have to renew yourself and rebrand yourself, we would say uh, relative to the USP of that the um, Holly Kolani, who is a young timer and is 15 years away from even being eligible to be on the historic register. And that's like the most iffy time when things mostly get outdated and then people say, well, in worst case, as we talked about in one of the last shows, the Kapalua, you tear it down entirely or you basically make such a drastic facelift. And we say don't because this place here is already vintage, is already classy after only three and a half de decades. And what proves that is the next picture. Um, well, a second, but this one here again, this is, so I, I have to, so you came back and, and, and you said before, it lives and dies and here it doesn't die, but it lives with a staff. And these people were just approaching you and basically saying, hey, I remember you, wasn't it some while ago? I think sometimes in the 80s we saw each other the last time. So even the staff is authentic, is original, right? As you have yeah, stated. What is, what is a great pleasure, I don't get back uh, to the Holocaust as often as I'd like, but when I do, I suddenly see people that I've seen in the past, and these are people who have worked for the Holocaust for decades. Yeah. This is a place where so many of their employees uh, obviously uh, take pride and enjoy their work uh, because when you stay at the hotel and experience the service that these people what people provide, uh, that is a reflection on, on their care yeah. and their love of the place as well. Yeah, and just like you didn't get a facelift or some, you know, cosmetic surgery and they didn't get replaced by supposedly younger hip people, you just stay with the good old, and that is what the quality is, and that is also the quality of the hotel, that it doesn't have the need to be uh, renewed. And now, next slide, is the proof of evidence, because these people here get married, and they think this is, as it has always been, a very elegant place. But you also got a diverse you know, um, clientele, as you can see that stack of surfboards there on the right. So you get, you get quite the variety. Of, um, of human activity and event that keeps the place exciting. And that gets us to the next slide here. Once again, it's also a fancy place, but it's upscale. So, um, you know, whatever happened to the car here, it looks like a big butt was crashing into the windshield and they covered it up with a towel. So we will not never know what happened, but what it, I think tells us there is enough excitement of the human activity and event side, right, that um, that brings enough livelihood into the hotel. So, and that is always changing. And so you don't need to change the stage for that, which is just great and, and sort of leaves as much, um, um, you know, um, basically open stage for, 
for the inhabitants to basically play their dramas at times in it and on it, right? Yes. <laughs> Next slide. So here we're leaving again. These days, the stretch limousines down there, you take one look back. And you were, you know, goodbye by the uh, leader of the valet crew there. And we didn't jump into one of the stretch limousines, but into our vintage PIing mobile. Uh, get to the next slide, which once again, we compare that, that sort of like a chrome trimming around where the convertible top goes is, is chromed and is polished and is silver. And it reminded of, us of something in addition in the back. Right, the silver thing, the signage. Yes, the uh, uh, some years after the hotel opened, someone with a, a very fine sense of, of design and graphics decided to go back to uh, the Holocron typeface that was back in the 1930s, recreated it again, but in a modern material. And so here we have uh, the uh, the history of the hotel shown in a very clever and handsome way. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So uh, last slide here, uh, we're heading out. Again, with our recommendations pretty much stay true. So the, the changes could be like, you know, the complimentary water bottle could become a glass bottle to be repurposed and recycled and not dumped more plastic into the ocean. But these are just little things that you improve just like with a signage and you always stay true to the original. We're heading out here to do what you called a Sunset Boulevard uh, cruise. And so we will actually share that with you at the beginning of the new year. And until then, we're going to head out. You're actually going to um, carry on telling the Killingsworth legacy story at uh, multiple events and venues. Uh, I think if I recall correctly, in a couple of days in Bakersfield, California. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, so um, wish you all the best. I mean, we stay in touch, but on screen, we see each other in the new year. Again, with uh, more exciting uh, Killingsworth uh, crew projects. And um, until then, uh, everyone, um, happy holidays. We will have a show next week, so don't leave us yet. We actually will have it with a late partner by one of your favorite structural engineers, Alfred Yee, that we talked, that is with uh, Hans Kroc. So I uh, look forward to that. And um, I wish I could be with you in Bakersfield and uh, witness your presentation. So we stay in touch and prepare for the future shows. Um, and um, yeah, see you all back next week. If you can't make it, happy holidays. And until we see each other next year, please uh, stay as classy Rocky as Ron. Bye bye, Ron. Bye now.